there is a very well established correlation between obesity, insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes. So much so that we often kind of refer to the two um, diseases together as diabetes. Uh, in the US alone, about 90% of patients that do have type 2 diabetes are overweight or obese, and especially if that obesity, that adiposity is carried around the abdominal region, we do see a higher risk of type 2 diabetes. There's a number of risk factors that increase the risk of type 2 diabetes in individuals with obesity. So adolescent weight gain, maternal history of gestational diabetes, and abdominal obesity. Those are all um, predictors, uh, more consistent predictors of higher risk of type 2 diabetes. Um, and as we're going to see in this unit, insulin resistance is really the thing linking um, obesity and type 2 diabetes. That said, we don't fully understand the mechanism behind how obesity promotes insulin resistance. And that's going to be a common theme as we look at obesity and its correlation with things like cardiovascular disease and cancer as well. Okay, so if you don't remember type 2 diabetes, I don't know how much you guys actually do this in your courses, uh, but remember in healthy cells, uh, the pancreas releases insulin and insulin uh, binds to its receptors on insulin target cells like muscle and uh, liver cells. And the binding of insulin to its insulin receptor leads to a single signal transduction pathway that brings glucose transporters to the membrane of those cells, of those, in, of those glucose and insulin target cells. And those GLUT transporters, once they come to the membrane, that promotes the uh, influx of glucose into the cells and out of the blood, lowering blood glucose. However, in type 1 diabetes, the pancreas fails to produce insulin. That's not really what we're talking about in this unit. We are more focused on type 2 diabetes. And typically when we say diabetes, we mean type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is often referred to adult onset diabetes. That said, we are seeing more and more type 2 diabetes developing in adolescents um, due to probably the increases in um, obesity in the population. But uh, just to finish off on this slide, what is happening in type 2 diabetes, like I said, it's different than type 1. Insulin secretion is not typically the, the initial problem or the main problem, at least initially. The main problem typically in type 2 diabetes is that insulin is there, but for some reason the receptor and the signal transduction pathway associated with that receptor that leads glucose transporters to come to the membrane, though that signal transduction pathway is compromised. And quite honestly, we don't fully understand, I keep saying this, the exact mechanism by which it is compromised. Okay, so how? What is it about obesity that promotes this insulin resistance? We don't totally know, as I keep saying. <laughs> and probably it's a number of related mechanisms, because usually it's not one single thing that is leading to anything <laughs> in the body, because our bodies are complex systems themselves. But the main belief these days, at least, and that's gaining in popularity, is that it really is the dysregulation of adipokines, that dysregulated secretion of adipokines from uh, the, that larger white adipose tissue um, mass that's um, promoting that pro-inflammatory condition that is contributing to impairment of that insulin uh, receptor and its functions. Um, a, a, another hypothesis as to what might be causing insulin resistance, which has been challenged a bit more in recent years, is that having more free fatty acids in the blood um, might be associated in obesity, might be associated with an increase in insulin resistance. But we're gonna, gonna look at that a bit more as we move forward. But we'll stick kind of the beginning of this conversation with the dysregulation of adipokines and how that can potentially promote um, type two diabetes, okay, through insulin resistance. So like it says here, insulin resistance is one of those kind of key intermediate points that links that expanded adipose tissue mass, mass, specifically white adipose tissue, with a number of different diseases and conditions that also increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. So this slide 
emphasizes the fact that it is uh, insulin resistance that is part of promoting type 2 diabetes, but it's also part of promoting cardiovascular disease, but that's not the only thing as well. Okay, so like I said, some people believe and cling tightly to the free fatty acid hypothesis of what's promoting uh, expanded adipose tissue mass and increased risk of insulin resistance. But uh, these days, the focus is more on the dysregulated adipokine secretion patterns that we see in obesity, linking it to, to insulin resistance. Okay, so we've talked about inflammation. If you need to go over that, those notes, feel free to do so. But like we said, um, or like we keep talking about, increase in adiposity is associated with a pro-inflammatory state. What's causing those pro-inflammatory signals and um, state? Um, it could be, like we talked about in the last unit, the, the death, the rupture of adipocytes that, pr that promotes an immune response. It could be that hypoxic state that we see there or a mechanical stress of that adipose tissue as well. These are all might be some of the factors that are promoting that increase in inflammation. Something else we saw when we talked about inflammation is that in uh, obesity, we see a polarization of our macrophages towards more of this M1 condition. And remember this, these M1 macrophages are more likely to release pro-inflammatory cytokines, which again, promote more inflammation in the area. Okay. And what's interesting, which is worth mentioning here, is one of the markers that we see, like an anatomical marker that we see that, that signifies a higher inflammatory state in obesity, is that we see, yes, more macrophages. So these are some macrophages in here. We see more macrophages, but we also see the macrophages surround adipocytes and form what are called, where does it say here, crown-like structures. Kind of looks like a crown uh, surrounding that adipocyte. And we believe when we see this crown-like formation that there's a higher chance of inflammation, which makes sense because there's more macrophages, and again, a higher risk of the um, inflammation-mediated um, comorbidities that we see in obesity. Okay, so we already kind of talked about this. There's nothing too new on this slide, but again, it talks about the shift in immune profile that we see in obesity, again, promoting that pro-inflammatory state. And remember, especially when we're talking about like our M1 macrophages, these are also, these are more cellular changes, but remember that when these cells change, they also secrete a number of pro-inflammatory uh, signals, like those inflammatory cytokines, like uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha, for instance. I don't actually expect you to know the signal transduction pathway that's associated with the insulin receptor. There's just too much to know in this unit, so I think I made an executive call that that's not what really we're, what we're going to keep our focus on. What I want you to take from this slide is this is a schematic of what we believe the insulin sensing pathway might look like. Um, and, and its signal transduction pathway that leads to all those changes that are good <laughs> and are associated with good glucose homeostasis. Uh, but the main point here is that, again, in obesity, when we have these pro-inflammatory signals, perhaps also with those, those free fatty acids, but again, like I said, that's being challenged these days, but things like tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-6, remember leptin can be pro-inflammatory as well. When these bind to their own receptors, they lead to the activation of these inhibitory signals, particular SOX and JNK, which can have a negative effect on that insulin sensing system and its... Um, ideal uh, uh, outputs, okay? So in a healthy state, insulin reception usually leads to things like protein synthesis, glucose transport, which we talked about, glycogen synthesis, and uh, gluconeogenesis, making new glucose as well. But again, in obesity, when there is this pro-inflammatory state, we believe that some of these inflammatory cytokines are impairing the sensing and transduction pathway, which is affecting those 
factors that have a positive effect on glucose homeostasis. At the end of the day, what all of this leads to is more glucose in the blood. <laughs> more glucose in the blood, less in target tissues, and more and more of this insulin resistance as well. Okay, so that's more of the um, adipokine hypothesis of what links obesity and insulin resistance. But there is another hypothesis as well, which is um, a bit losing a bit of its steam these days. Okay, so it has been hypothesized that elevated free fatty acid levels uh, that might be seen in obesity are what are promoting insulin resistance. And the proposed pathway there, one of the proposed pathways there, is that when we have more adipose tissue mass, we also have more fat cell lipolysis. Specifically, we have more triglycerides being broken down into their products, glycerol and fatty acids. And since we are breaking down our triglycerides into primarily fatty acids, we have more free fatty acids that are being released into the blood and we have seen associations between higher free fatty acid levels in the blood and insulin resistance okay we also believe that those free fatty acids might promote the oxidative stress and the endoplasmic reticulum stress which we're not talking that much about but that is also a proposed mechanism linking obesity and some of its effects okay all in all, the proposal, <laughs> the proposed mechanism is that too much fatty acids in the blood is in promoting insulin resistance, okay? And yeah, there is evidence to support that when free fatty acid levels go up, insulin resistance increases as well, okay? That said, if we lower free fatty acid levels, insulin sensitivity seems to improve, again, suggesting a correlation between free fatty acid levels and insulin resistance, okay? Um, and also we know that having a lot of free fatty acids in the blood promotes a pro-inflammatory state as well again perhaps contributing to that um, insulin resistance that said <laughs> um, large scale there's been a couple of really large scale meta-analyses that have considered both randomized controlled trials and epidemiological data and the results have shown that interestingly obesity doesn't necessarily correlate with higher levels of free fatty acids okay so i'm not saying free fatty acid levels in the blood don't promote insulin resistance there does seem to be a correlation between too much free fatty acids and insulin resistance however having more free fatty acids in the blood may or is not necessarily associated with obesity obesity is not necessarily causing that so what they're suggesting now is that perhaps it's not obesity leads to more free fatty acids in the blood, leads to insulin resistance, because obesity isn't correlated with more free fatty acids in the blood. So like I said, this, this hypothesis is losing some steam, but um, it's important to still consider that all of these are parts of the puzzle. And there's a lot that we still don't know and we can't forget about complexity through all of this as well, because it's probably a combination of factors that we haven't fully teased out that's promoting insulin resistance in individuals with obesity, okay? So, like I said, the support for the free fatty acid hypothesis of insulin resistance in obesity is waning, and more focus is still uh, surrounding obesity-linked um, inflammation and that promoting insulin resistance and that promoting type 2 diabetes and that promoting cardiovascular disease as well, okay? But quite honestly, the only thing that I can say truthfully is that we don't fully know. We don't fully know. We don't fully know what causes insulin resistance still. And we don't fully know. If we don't fully know that, then we're going to have an even harder time trying to figure out what how obesity promotes insulin resistance. So a question to ask ourselves then is, do we need to know? What are our purposes? If we are trying to manage obesity in clients that we work with or in the population, is knowing the mechanism of obesity to insulin resistance important? I guess it depends what your focus is. If you have a pharmacological lens, it probably is more important. But like I said, knowing the exact mechanism, it kind of depends where our focus lies. 
And again, we have to consider that there's still a lot of pieces of the puzzle that we're still trying to figure out. So keep that in mind. Okay. In the next unit, we are going to look at how obesity potentially correlates with cardiovascular disease or does correlate with cardiovascular disease. And we'll explore some mechanisms, uh, proposed mechanisms of what promotes that linkage.